Hello, in this video we will take a look at the new volumetric primitive which is the replacement for hypervoxels. First, so first what I'm gonna do is add a null, name it volumetric, of course you don't have to do that, and then go to the object properties. Here we have the new primitive type selector Currently it is set to mesh, but we don't we don't have a mesh on a null. We can have a fiber primitive, an open VDB primitive, a shape primitive, and the volumetric primitive, which we are going to look at now. So I've activated activated the volumetric, and we see this its options here embedded onto the object properties and let's turn on VPR. I've set up a simple gray backdrop so we can take a look at the how the scattering and absorption affect the color. So what we see here is the type of the volumetric. We have three types Currently, we've got a cube. I can rotate the null to see that it is a cube. We've got a sphere, and we've got a cone. The cone is Z-aligned, but you can scale it in any way you want. stretch it, scale it, to shape it into whatever you need. Let's reset that. And let's work with the, with the sphere shape. The next options are the, the radius of the sphere and the step size for the volumetric integrator to use in the in the ray marching algorithm the more the the smaller the step size the more steps it is going to take and of course the slower you know it will render but this will become useful especially when the volumetric is textured because some, sometimes the scale of the texture is, sm is small so you will have to lower the step size to get all of the detail you need. Um, in the lights the volumetric samples is also going to affect the quality of the lighting for the volumetric shapes the same way it is going to affect the quality of uh, volumetric lights. And with uh, eight samples and no textures we are getting a pretty smooth result. Um, the next option is the emission. If I just I can just use a blue emission there's a scale value for it. If you are using textures connected to the emission so it is easy to just use the scale value to scale t the texture without actually modifying the texture. Next we have the scattering value. This is the amount light is scattered within the volume and it basically determines the color of your volume. So if we make it blue, we can see that the light reflecting off of the surface is blue. And the scattering scale affects the density of the scattering effect. So when I start increasing the scattering scale, we can start seeing the effects of it. And it becomes quite close to a solid 
if we just use a almost white scattering color. Next up is the absorption. Um, this is uh, very important when you do physically based participating media such as smoke. You can, if I set it to blue, the absorption will look orange and let's, let's set it to darker blue like so and then these two values work together to produce the end result. You can have all kinds of cool effects if you tweak these parameters. It is good to have uh, some amount in each channel using a uh, value of zero is uh, not really physically based, but it is all up to you, of course. So let's start making something useful. What I'm going to do is disable the absorption. We don't need that for this example. I'm going to increase the scattering scale and then I'm going to use the nodes to texture this sphere. And we have three texture modes. One is none. It does not do any displacement of the volume. It you can only texture the scattering emission, etc. But no displacement is uh, happening. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select the non-pyroclastic which is uh, local displacement, as you will see, see soon. And you can see the black color in the texture cuts away from the volume, and brighter colors keep the volume. So what we're going to do here is going to scale the texture so it's almost like a puff, a cloud. And let's increase the frequencies to get more detail. And let's increase the step size to get a better evaluation, more accurate eval evaluation of the texture. And now if I, if I tweak the texture density, you can see the, the effect becomes more dense. If I lower it, it is like a wispy cloud. And when I increase it, it's a uh, dense cloud. Let's keep that at, at one. The texture amplitude determines how much of the texture is applied as a displacement. And if I lower it to close to zero, it will start to look like the, the original sphere. So we're gonna use the, the default values. What I'm gonna do now is scale the volumetric on its y-axis to make it flatter. And now we have a circular puff of smoke or cloud or you know whatever. Um, next thing I'm gonna show is the how to use for example, a gradient and this input 
node here. What we have is um, we have particle ID, so we can switch colors based on particle IDs or particle age, speed, weight, etc. Um, and we have the world position of the vol volumetric sample, and we have the object position of the volumetric sample. We, uh, the object position follows the the particle well, when you want when it's when it is animated or scaled. So, so um, let's add the gradient and put some meaning meaningful values in there, such as a blue gradient these values a little bit. Close it and we're going to use the object position and the distance from the center is easily attained by using the length node. So we are getting the length from the center of the volume to the sample and we're going to connect this to the input and crank up the emission and connect the node. So now we have a blue gradient going from the center to the outer edge of the volumetric. You can do many things with these uh, different nodes. The, it is pretty limitless of what you can do and I can increase the effect as much as I want and let's increase the density might be a little bit too too dense <laughs> and now we have a sort of a galaxy looking puff of s smoke. I'm going to decrease the range of the gradient to get a nice smoky edge on this uh, shape. Of course all of these are o automatically work with particles. So if I zoom out, I will go to the primitive and select FX emitter, maybe make the generator size bigger, and move the timeline. And now we have a lot of these primitives attached to particles. And uh, this is pretty much it for the volumetric shape. It's very useful. You can do a lot of things with it, especially when they are attached to particles. And uh, see you next time.